All right, guys, you are going to be composing your typography and Zentangle design on our beloved application called Canva. You guys have used this before, so it should be familiar to you. I want you to make sure that you're using this slide because you're gonna have a lot of requirements that are here. So you're gonna need to refer back to this as you're working to make sure that you're hitting all these requirements. Now, the first thing that we have to do before getting onto Canva is I need you guys to download a grid. This grid is gonna be on your actual paper too. Uh, so this is going to be an exact layout of what you're going to be doing on your real life paper. So you're going to need to click download grid here. And this is going to take you to a drive link. And the file is called transparentgrid.png. Once it finishes loading, you guys are going to notice it has that checkered background. So that's what makes it transparent. So I'm not going to click like any of these other things. I'm going to click download because I want it to be downloaded to my device. Okay, so it says download complete, so I can exit out of this. Let's go back to the presentation that we were talking about. So with the requirements, you need to have four to eight numbers, letters, or characters. You need to have at least four different types of fonts. You need to create these fonts with the hollow effect with the one thickness. You need to have one letter, number, or character that must go off the page, so it'll be cropped or partially there, there must be at least one letter, number, or character overlapping another element. Now, we want you guys to choose what difficulty you'd like to um, go about with your project because we want you to be in tune with your own artistic ability. So if you're choosing the easy route, you're going to want to choose only four characters and do a really basic printed font. If you want to kind of challenge yourself a little bit, for the medium level, you're going to do six characters and do a more complicated print and font and try maybe even some script. And if you want to be really challenging, you're going to do something that's hard, which is eight characters with a complicated print and script, script fonts. So I want to show you some examples of what those levels look like. Here are what my examples look like that um, I actually did for this project. And this is the easy level right here. So you can see I only have four characters, but they still hit the requirements. I still have four. I have four different types of fonts. I have them hollowed out, which means that you don't see their insides. It's just an outline. Hollow also means outline. I have uh, one going off the page, and I have uh, an overlapping area. Now, this qualifies as easy because look at these fonts. They're really simple. They're just little block letters. They're really easy to do. Let's go on to the medium level. Wow, that got a lot more complicated, didn't it? So you can see that I've introduced some script here. I have six characters. I actually um, did a little bit more overlapping in this one. And you can see that the way that the characters are drawn are just a little bit more complicated. And lastly, we have the hardest level, which is eight characters. The eight characters is a lot to fit in a six by nine inch space. So that itself is challenging, but then add that you have some more complicated print fonts like this very retro number eight. You have script that has lots of curves and different things to it. Um, so what we're gonna do is you are going to go to the canva.com homepage. You're gonna log in with your Google information, which I've already done. And you're gonna click right here to create design. You're gonna go and push custom dimensions. Please remember that you need to choose inches. So I'm gonna do width nine, height six. And I'm gonna to go to create new design. And I always think it's really smart to right away label your file just so it's really easy to find. So like right now it says um, untitled design. So I'm just gonna type in typography. So the very first thing that you want to do is you want to upload your grids. So you're going to go to uploads and you're going to go to upload media and you're going to choose device. And you're going to choose that transparent grid that you've already downloaded. So I'm going to click this and push open. And it'll take a second for it to upload. You guys can see I use Canva for everything. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna click this and it automatically puts it in. So 
Please don't use the shift button. I know normally you guys use shift to keep things in proportion. On Canva, it does the opposite. Everything in Canva is already nicely proportioned for you. So I'm just gonna drag the corner here and until it meets the edge, you can see that I kind of got like a notification that it turned purple. And you don't wanna make it go off the page because then your stuff won't be proportionate, proportional, yeah, proportional to when you do it. So I'm gonna close this uploads. And now it's time to play with my text. Now in my examples that I showed you guys, I did my name, I did Gab, Gabs, um, and Gabby, my favorite number, plus an explanation point. You guys can choose whatever you'd like. It can be a word like cool or extra. That's what people describe me as. Um, just make sure that it's school appropriate, but I know a lot of people like to do their names. So what you're gonna do is you're going to go to text and I always just choose add a subheading. You're not going to want to use any of these fancy schmancy things over here because we're going really basic with this. So you're going to go add a heading and you're going to type in whatever letter you want to start with. So I want to start with a G. Uh, as you can see, well, let me make it bigger so you can see. My font right now is white. So I just want to make sure to select it and change that to black. Okay, so now I can see my G really, really well. And let me deselect. And I can move this around. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that I like whatever font that I'm choosing. So if I was doing something easy, if you click down here on fonts, you get a lot of different examples. Like you can see it says try calligraphy or open sans. I can just type in bold. And I'm going to get a lot of really simple things, okay? Lots of things that just look like capital letters. So you're just going to kind of test out some stuff. I recommend taking time to look through these and do stuff that you like. You're going to be working on this project for a while, so make sure that you pick things that you like. You can type in calligraphy. And you're going to get things that are a little bit more complicated, a little bit more difficult to draw. Ooh, that's complicated. Um, I like to type in, I really like vintage fonts. That's like one of my things that I love a lot. So I can look through and see what does a vintage font look like. Play around with it. This is your time to compose and to really make your piece sing and make it what you want. So once you've found an option that you like, ooh, that's good you're going to create an effect on it. This would be really difficult to trace right now because do I trace this, do I trace this? So you're gonna go right here to effects and there is an option here called hollow. You're gonna click hollow. Right now that's way too thick to trace. We're gonna move this down. You can either use the sliding scale and move it down just to one or you could type in one here. But now I have a really great looking G that I'm ready to go with. I can make it bigger, again, by not pushing shift. Here's what happens if you push shift and you uh, pull. It actually it cuts off part of your image, so that's not good. Hmm? So make sure you don't do that. Um, something else I can do is you guys see where it has this little, these two little arrows. This is how you turn your piece. I highly recommend putting your piece on angles. I think that's gonna make it look more interesting. So because one of my requirements is to go off the page, I'm gonna just have this go off the page a little bit. Now, don't worry that this box is outside of the page. It doesn't matter. It's still gonna just save the image as whatever's in the this six by nine box. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my other letters. And again, you might have to change the color. I'm not sure why it's doing automatic white. And for every single one of my letters, I'm gonna change the effect to hollow. And again, change that thickness down to one. This is all on that slides presentation if you're forgetting some of this information. Because one of my uh, rules is to overlap. I'm gonna overlap that G and that A right there. And I'm going to keep it easy for the example, but if you'd like to make it more challenging, don't forget you can do between six and eight letters and more complicated fonts.
and you don't want to, I don't want to repeat fonts because one of the requirements is have four different fonts. So I need to make sure that I am choosing some different things from over here. Oh, that's cool. Oh, but my, my thickness is too big. That's the great thing about Canva is you can keep changing things as you go. I like that bee kind of being little over here. Okay, so I need one more letter. Let's do S for Gabs. And I think I want to change the direction of this. Now it looks like I wrote gas. <laughs> ah, okay, I'll put it down here. <laughs> okay. Um, and then I need to change the font. Oh, I'm still on vintage. So I'm wrong. It also gives you some good suggestions up here. Like it says handwriting, display, headings, paragraph, sans serif, serif, modern. Oh, there's bold right there. Oh, oh, I like that. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with my design. I want to just take a moment right now to double check. If you go back to this, I want to make sure that I hit all these requirements and I want to make sure that I'm aware of my difficulty levels. This is something you guys are going to be graded on. So when I'm working on this, I know that I'm going with the easy level. Let's just double check the requirements. Do I have four to eight characters? Yes, I do. At least four different types of font. You can just click on it and see how it says Brixton Sands, Open Sands, Robalt, Robalt Vintage, and Aprilla Bold. Okay, so check mark, got that. Created with the hollow effect at one. Yes, I did that. One character must go off the page. That is my G up here. There must be at least one character overlapping another element. So my G and my A are overlapping. Check, check, check. So I am ready to download. And I want to download this to my computer. So I'm going to click this arrow that's pointing down. And it also says download. It says PNG. And I'm going to click download. This will go right to your computer. You can see it's in the download manager. So you can click show in folder. This is just in your files. And it's right there, typography, PNG, and I can double click on it. And this is officially saved to my computer. Great work, guys.